warm welcome to you. It is so good to have you connect with us again this morning. For all of our regulars, for all of our, our, our church family, it's just so good to have you connect again this morning. For all of you who are visiting with us for the first time, you clicking on us for the very first time, a friend invited you, whatever it may be, it's just great to have you with us this morning. And uh, we're really looking forward to just God doing something really significant in our lives this morning. Now, I don't know if you've ever heard of something called arm pump. Um, unfortunately, I've not just heard of arm pump, but I've had the misfortune of experiencing arm pump. And essentially what arm pump is, is when your forearm just goes rock hard. Um, you, you, you lose all strength in your, in your forearm. It, it just feels completely overwhelmed. And it's normally accompanied by a pretty nasty, painful feeling. Now, in riding motorcycles, arm pump comes from, from something called white knuckling the handlebars. And when I white knuckle the handlebars, it means that I'm hanging on to the handlebar so tightly that it's causing my knuckles to turn white. So why would you white knuckle the handlebars? Well, it's very simple. We white knuckle the handlebars out of a fear of a loss of control. And isn't it true that, that, that life works the same way for us, that, that, that we, we, we so often can experience this arm pump in life? Maybe it's just arm pump of the mind or arm pump of the heart, arm pump of the soul, where we just feel completely overwhelmed, where we just feel like, like we have this loss of strength. It's, it's tough getting out of bed in the morning. And, and, and all of this being accompanied by this pain that really isn't pleasant to deal with. And I believe that during the times that we've been working through and, and going through as a society, as, as a global society, I believe that there are several of us that have actually experienced this arm pump of life. And it's all because we end up trying to white knuckle life. We're, we're, we're trying to maintain and we're trying to keep control of everything that's going on around us. This morning, I'd like to just connect with a couple of stories, just, just tell you of a couple of people who, who face some pretty tough times and how they had to choose to not white knuckle life. The first guy that I'd like to, to, to talk about is, is a man by the name of James. And James was speaking to a specific audience when he started talking about, about someone else, a guy by the name of Job, who'd, who'd lived long before James. But James, in this moment, speaking to his audience, he was, he was recalling the life of someone else who had gone through some incredible pain, some incredible hardship. And essentially, Job had lost everything. Job had lost his income. Job had lost his children. And Job had gone through some intense physical pain. And as James remembers the life of Job, he, he, he kind of captures it all in, in, in James chapter 5 and verse 11. And to, to, to sum that up, what, what James is communicating to his audience in the moment is that, that he, he's saying to them that there is a history. When we look at the life of Job, and if we look at lives beyond Job, like there is a history of God's faithfulness when we give over control. And that is essentially what James is drawing out of this life of Job and communicating to his audience. Now, now who's James communicating to? Well, first off, James was the brother of Jesus. 
Not just was James the brother of Jesus, James was also the, the he, was, he was heading up the first church in Jerusalem. And his audience was the church within Jerusalem, but his audience is also you and, and me today. But as he's communicating to his audience, you see, the, the church in Jerusalem, they were busy being persecuted. Uh, the, the government had kind of ha, ha, got a, a, an exceptionally dim view of anyone who called themselves a Jesus follower and kind of put sanctions against them. Um, if you called yourself a Jesus follower, you were not allowed to buy or trade in the marketplace. Um, that was just life for you. Um, at the same time, uh, you were you were shunned socially. Uh, you were the the church back then was was highly impoverished, highly impoverished as a result. And because of everything that was going on, and because of the way that they were impoverished, they ended up having to live together communally just to survive. And it's this guy. It's this guy, it's, it's James who's, who's, who's leading this group of people, who's communicating to this group of people, who, who's facing these circumstances, who's saying to them, and I believe still saying to you and me, that there is a history of God's faithfulness when we hand over control. Then there's another guy by the name of Paul. Paul, we, we kind of know him a little better. Um, and, and as we look at the life of, 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 of Paul, I mean, he wrote several letters from a prison cell. He, he, he had gone through some pretty traumatic experiences in life. I mean, he was, he was stoned and not in the way that you're thinking. Uh, I mean, they threw pretty large rocks at him and left him for dead. Uh, he was shipwrecked. Um, he was beaten beyond recognition. He was whipped. He was even bitten by a snake at one point. And having gone through all that, and in spite of experiencing all of that, he still gives this advice to the, the, the church in Thessalonica then, and I believe to you and me now. He, he says this to them. He says, always be joyful. Never stop praying. And be thankful in all circumstances. What a tall order. I mean, think about that. Always be thankful. Never stop praying. And be thankful in all circumstances. As Paul says that, you know, I, I can't help but stop and just think of his life and look at his life and just think to myself, man, a guy who's been through so much, who's experienced so much of these things, here he, he stands in front of his audience and, and, and across history stands in front of you and me and says, hey, even though I've gone through all of this, I'm still communicating to this day to you, always be joyful. Never stop praying and be thankful in all circumstances. And I, I can't help but just ask myself, why can Paul say that? Why can Paul say that? And I believe that the answer lies in the meat of that sandwich. And, and, and the meat in that sandwich is really just never stop praying. What's Paul communicating there? Paul, Paul's saying, hey, the meat in the middle of this sandwich is stay constantly engaged with God. We need to constantly be engaging with God. And as we constantly engage with God, something starts to happen. Like, 
something starts to happen inside of us where our posture starts to change. When, when we are, are constantly just in communication and, and engaging with God, our posture in the moment starts to change. And as the posture of our hearts begins to change, then we find that it's, that it's far easier to find real and, and legitimate joy in really tough moments. We, we find that, that our lives start to look like lives of, of gratitude and thankfulness. And I don't know where you are today, but I can definitely speak for myself and, and say that, that I'd love to live a life where it's easy to find joy, even in tough circumstances. I, I'd love to live a life that, that speaks of a life of gratitude and thankfulness. The truth is, though, that, that so often we just... We white-knuckle life. We, we, we white-knuckle for control. We're trying to, to, within everything that's going on around us, we're, we're trying to just stay in control. And I want to say this, even of things that are just completely out of our control. And as we think of, of this, this need for control, like there has to be an antidote for it. There has to be something that we can do where we can shift from that space of just trying to control everything and living a life of release, living that life of joy, that life of, of thankfulness, of gratitude. And I believe that it's found in that connecting with God. And, and as we connect with God, we start to connect with his antidote for that moment. And that antidote really is that key to release. It really is that key to, to, to joy, real joy, to, to gratefulness and, and, and thankfulness. And that antidote is humility. You see, ladies and gentlemen, you'll, you'll know that it takes humility to ask for help. I've experienced that several times in my life as to just how tough it's been to ask for help. But, but you see, when we're connecting with God, when, we, when we're staying connected to God, he, and he changes that posture of our hearts to a posture of humility, it becomes that much easier to just ask for help. And we, we need to ask for help from the people around us, from, from our family, from our co-workers. Uh, there are moments where we need to just admit to the fact that we need help. And you may be in that space right now where you've been white-knuckling all these things and, and at the end of the day, you, you're coming to the realization that you need to let go. That you need to take on a posture of humility and ask for help. And it's when we take on that posture of humility that we can also ask for help from God. You see, we know that, that God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. And when we come to God in humility and we, when we ask him, I just need help right now that it's when I take on that posture of humility that he comes and, and he gives me and, and he comes and he gives you that grace that we need for that moment. This isn't just some theory that I'm speaking about today. This isn't just some, some if I can say, theological thought. For me, this goes so much further and so much deeper than just that. Uh, this past week, I kind of hit a wall. This past week, I kind of just really, really struggled. 
Uh, I woke up on Wednesday morning and I, I felt like I had arm pump of the heart and arm pump of the mind and soul. I just, I, I, I was drained of all energy. I, uh, I was feeling completely overwhelmed and uh, I just was carrying that sense of pain that comes with all of that. And I got chatting with my wife and, and, and just started explaining where I was. And as I was explaining where I was, after a while, I just said to her, I said, you know, I, I feel like I've got 100 rands worth of work and 20 rands worth of time. And I just don't know how much longer I can do this. And we chatted a bit and I separated myself and just went and sat and had a moment with God. Just that connecting with God again. And it was in that moment that as I was connecting with God, if I'm honest, I just broke. I just, in that moment, just broke. And I was just like, God, I'm completely overwhelmed. I sat there and I probably wept like a 16-year-old schoolgirl who just had her heart broken. But that was my moment with God. I just sat there and I just wept before Him and I just kind of poured out my heart and just said, Lord, I, I cannot do this anymore. I'm trying to figure out how to just live life in a time of crisis at the same time, trying to be a good dad, trying to be a good husband. Uh, Lord, I'm, uh, I'm trying to lead a group of people through exceptionally tough times. I'm trying to stand up in front of an empty church with two cameras and and." communicate your heart to your people, trying to deposit hope into lives when I'm feeling right now like I need that hope. And it was right there in that moment where I just had God point me to just uh, the words of Jesus in the book of, of Matthew chapter 19, verse 26, where Jesus is speaking to his disciples and they're discussing something and they're talking about a specific, a specific issue. But, but the words that kind of hit me were these words where Jesus says to them, he says, humanly speaking, and I want to stop there, humanly speaking, ladies and gentlemen, that was where I was at. I was humanly speaking I was white knuckling all these different things, trying to keep control over all of these different facets of life. And I was trying to do it in my own efforts. I was white knuckling all these things. And Jesus says, humanly speaking, it is impossible. And man, was I finding that out. He carries on and he says, but with God, everything is possible. With God, everything is possible. Man, humanly speaking, I can be holding on to these things. But hey, when I'm willing to humble myself, when I'm willing to come to God in a posture of humility and just go, Lord, I'm letting go. And I'm handing over control to you. That it's that moment where God steps in and in Him and with Him all Things are possible. It was the musician and songwriter, Toby Mack, who said, more happens in God's hands than in my efforts. More happens in God's hands than in my efforts. And isn't that just the truth. You see, ladies and gentlemen, we can white knuckle and we can hang on to everything with all that we have and we can get stuck and we can feel overwhelmed and we can feel like we've lost all strength as we are losing all control. Or we can hand it over to God with a posture of humility and recognize that more can happen in his hands than can ever happen in my own efforts. And in that moment that I just had with God, I had to realize that, that I needed to listen to the advice of Paul, that I needed to be constant in my connecting with God, that I needed to change my posture to a posture of humility, and that through that, 
what I started finding was happening was as I was connecting with God, like I started becoming aware of all these things that God was busy doing in my life. I was aware of just how he was giving us grace for all these different moments. And I started just becoming thankful. I started becoming grateful for what he was doing in our lives. And then this joy started setting in. And I felt like even in the middle of all this stuff, they felt like it was out of control. Like there was a release. And I could just find real joy in that moment again. I don't know where you are. I really don't know where you are. But I wonder this morning, what's your next step? What's your next step? Have you been white knuckling life? Have you had your own moments, your, your, your own moments where you've just got all these different aspects in life and you, you're just trying to hold on to each aspect. You're just trying to, you're trying to control everything. And if you're honest, you lost control a long time ago and this arm pump of life is starting to set in and you're feeling overwhelmed, you are losing strength for the moment, and there's a pain that you're carrying around with you that is just absolutely debilitating. And this morning, your next step just might be that you need to let go of control, that you need to let go of trying to be in control. That this morning you just need to give over control and let God take control. Recognize that humanly speaking, this is impossible. You just cannot hang on to this anymore. But it's time to let God, with whom all things are possible, take control. In order for that to happen, maybe this morning your next step is that you just need to step into a space of changing your posture, of, of feeling like you've got this, possibly even feeling like you don't have this, but you're so badly trying to have this, and just take on a posture of humility. Just humble yourself before God and before the people close to you. And reach out and ask for help. And I believe that when we approach God, when we reach out to Him for help, that it's in those moments that He comes and gives us the grace that we need to work through whatever we're going through. And I believe with all my heart that that is His heart for you and for me this morning. But all of this starts with one thing. And that is me choosing to connect with Him daily. To heed the advice of Paul. And to never stop praying. Does that mean that I turn into a monk and I walk around mumbling to myself all day long? No, not at all. Not at all. It just means that I've got this internal conversation going on with God where I'm entrusting every detail of my life, every moment of my life to Him. And it requires humility. It requires for me to just want to connect with Him. And maybe that's your next step this morning is to just choose to connect with Him. If you're watching on church online right now, you'll see there's a little tab there that says that I've made a commitment to Christ. And this morning, I want to kind of turn that little tab into something different. Um, and I'd like to say this to you. If this morning you're in that space where you know you've been white knuckling, you've got arm pump in life, and it's time to give God control. It's time to, 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 to give up that control and Give that control back to God. 
then just as a, as a step of faith, just even for yourself within, within your own resolution, within your own heart, to just go click that little deal and just say, today I give God control. If you're watching this on Facebook, you can just pop a little hand emoji up. Just why am I saying this? I think two things, guys and ladies. Number one, it's just a faith step for you. Number two, it just lets us know that God's busy doing something in your life. It just allows us to connect with you in a little way. It allows us to just pray for you in this week to come to know that, that, hey, God is doing something significant in your life and that we can stand with you, pray with you, connect with you. Because God's heart for you is not that you struggle through this time, but that through this time, you can give Him control and that you can experience His grace for the moment. Let's pray. Father God, we thank You for this morning, Lord. We thank you for what you are wanting to do and what you are busy doing in the lives of men and women all around the world, Lord. Father God, I thank you that this morning we can just come, Lord, and recognize our desperate need for you. Lord, that this morning we can just lay down our need for control. And Lord, that this morning we can just entrust every detail of our lives to you knowing that as we humble ourselves before you, that you give us the grace that we need for the moment. So Father God, this morning, as men and women all, all around South Africa, all around the world, Lord, just come and surrender these things to you, Lord. Just come and hand control back to you. That, Father God, I thank you that you meet us where we are. Lord, I thank you that you meet us in that moment and that you come and give us your grace for that moment. Lord, I thank you that as we get up from this place, Lord, that we start living these lives that Paul spoke of that are always joyful. That, that never stop connecting with you, Lord, and that are thankful and grateful in every circumstance. But we know that that's not humanly speaking, but that's entrusting our lives to a God who has a track record for being faithful. We love you, Lord. And we pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. So great to have had you here with us, just connecting again this morning. Uh, we trust that you have a great week. We look forward to seeing you right back here next week. Have a great week. We love you.